Hello, I'm Dickie Arbiter in London. And I'm Victoria Arbiter in New York, and you're watching Royal Report. It's been a year since the death of Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away peacefully at Balmoral at the age of 96. Most people alive at the time had never known any other monarch, and for many she served as the backdrop to their entire lives. She was expected to be there in times of national celebration and national tragedy. But as a result, people rarely gave her room to experience things on a personal level. She was expected to be stoic, and she was expected to be there for us no matter what. But Dad, you were there for several moments during her reign that were deeply personal and affected her on quite a profound level. Again, she never exhibited that on a public platform, but you witnessed it. So I would love if you could talk a little uh, about the Windsor Castle fire is sort of where I'm going with this, but in terms of those other moments, the decommissioning of Britannia in 1997, the death of Diana when she returned to London, you were there for both of those, but Windsor was personal to us too because we were living there at the time. We were living in Windsor and the castle, yes, it was personal to us because every day I was traveling into London to work and every day I passed the castle and every day when I went home, I passed the castle again. And when I got a phone call uh, from the media to say there's a fire at Windsor Castle, I thought there can't be a fire at Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle hadn't told us there's a fire. So I phoned the castle, I got the switchboard. I said, can I speak to superintendent? Oh, he's busy at the moment. I said, well, I believe there's a cut fire at the castle. Oh no, I couldn't possibly talk about that. And here I was at Buckingham Palace and somebody at Windsor Castle wouldn't tell me that there was a fire. But eventually I got through to somebody and they did say there was a fire and I hightailed it down the M4 motorway west of London to Windsor Castle. Normally it's a journey by car, takes about 45, 50 minutes. I think I did it in 30. I had my hazard light, warning lights flashing, highly illegal, but I did it and I got there in time. A lot of media outside the gate, chomping at the bit, wanting to get in. I got them in, I managed them. They had a good vantage point with a wall between uh, them and the fire so the firemen could get on with the job completely unhindered. And it was quite a sight because you could see the smoke from the motorway. You could, by the time we got to nighttime, you could look at the Brunswick Tower, which is in the northeast corner. It looked like a, a, a chimney with flames pouring out of it. The Queen arrived round about three o'clock in the afternoon. She always went to Windsor if she was working at Buckingham Palace for the weekend. It was her 40th wedding anniversary. Prince Philip was Argentina on, uh, on a public engagement, so he wasn't around. And there was the Queen on her own. Uh, Prince Andrew was there because he'd phoned her to tell her about the fire. And she was seeing what really was her home going up in smoke, albeit the northeast corner of it. She took great interest in what the firemen had to say. She spent a lot of time with the deputy chief fire officer of the Royal County of Berkshire, who was explaining what they were doing, explaining that they were building a firewall between the long corridor and the rest of the building to stop the fire rolling down to the state apartments. They finally got it under control the following morning. They were damping down and I returned there having spent until one o'clock in the morning on the Friday there, and then going back at six o'clock in the morning that was the day a government minister was going to come down and have a look. And I was there at the briefing and he was told quite a categorically, do not talk about the extent of the fire, do not talk about the restoration, do not talk about how much it's going to cost and do not talk about who's going to pay. So he walks out to the media and I'm there and he was a bit like a rabbit in running into the headlights. First question comes out, who's going to pay? The government will pay, he said. And he literally threw the queen under a bus because she had the most awful press for days on end until a few weeks later it was announced that uh, a decision by the Queen and Prince Philip that while they're not there in the summer up at Balmoral, they don't in Buckingham Palace to tourists and that along with restructuring tourist admissions to Windsor would pay for the restoration. It was a success story. And in five years, that castle was restored. It was officially opened uh, for the Queen 
on her golden wedding anniversary. The fire was the 20th of November 1992. The golden wedding anniversary was the 20th of November 1997. And I was at a meeting where it was discussed that this would be the first event. I said, no, it can't be the first event. The optics would not be good. I said, there's got to be a reception for the workers, for the carpenters, for the electricians, for the plumbers, for the plasterers, everybody who had worked on it. Obviously, you're not going to get everybody there, but I was given a figure of 1,500 people. These are people at the coalface, not the managers, not the foremen, not the people sitting in, in, in their ivory towers making decisions, but the actual people that did the work. And the Queen of Prince Philip went to this reception. She made a speech right at the very beginning, thanking everybody, got a raucous welcome from, from the 1,500 or so attendees. And normally they'd spend about 40 minutes at a reception. On this occasion, they spent two hours because they were so engrossed for, with, with stories the people had to tell. She was so engrossed that they had got it done in five years beyond anybody's belief. That's another edition of Royal Report. Thank you to all of you who have tuned in so far and thank you for your very warm welcome. We have enjoyed all of your comments, your thoughts, ideas, your reminiscences about where you were on the day Diana, Princess of Wales, passed away. Following this episode, we'd love to hear your memories of the Queen. Did you ever meet her? What stands out to you? What did you like most about her? Perhaps what you miss most about her? Use the comments section below to share all of that. We really do enjoy hearing your opinions as well. And if you'd like to see more, make sure to hit like, subscribe and ring the bell. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.